All right, yeah, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. I could say that to myself as well, because I haven't touched this game in well over a week. I am back from my vacation. If you didn't know, I've been gone for a week in Crete uh, on a poorly timed vacation. Uh, had I known the date and the things that would be coming up for my vacation, I would have probably postponed it for a week and actually gone right about now, because I did miss out on a streamer event and obviously the pre-release-ish kind of thing for Guilds of Ravnica. It looks like, though, I'm back just in time to do a fair few things. So, uh, we have had ourselves a collection wipe as well, so as you can see, I've got no more decks, and my collection is feeling a little bit sorry for itself. It doesn't take very long to get to the end. So, how do we fix that? Well, we're going to be doing a pack opening. I've got a lot of packs to open. Um, I'm going to build my collection, pretty much, but... I'm not going to show you all of these, because I I figured most of you wouldn't want to watch all of this, since you've already seen it before. So we're actually going to be opening 100 packs of Guilds of Ravnica instead, and then I'll just unlock these on my own. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick cut, I think, open up all of these so we can see what wild cards we're on. At the moment, you get gifted 1 Mythic, 2 Rare, 4 Uncommons, 8 Uncommons as part of a brand new account. I'm assuming that's what that is anyway. Um, so I'm going to open up all of these real quick and then we'll see what wild cards we're left with and then we'll open up the 100 packs. Uh, for those who haven't watched a pack opening for me in the past, uh, I do tend to go through some of the packs uh, reasonably slowly because I like to talk about the plans that I have for each card, whether I think it's good or bad, if I'm going to build a deck around it. Uh, sometimes I talk about if it's good in limited and things like that because we are going to be doing a little bit of limited this week as well sealed has been introduced to the game so we're going to be playing a mini pre-release as it were because I missed mine so I want to go play some sealed and hopefully you guys want to go watch it so I'm going to make a quick cut I'm going to open all of these wonderful wonderful packs and then we'll see what wild cards we're left with all right see you in a sec guys Alright, after all of that, we actually opened up all of our other packs. We're just left with our Guilds of Ravnica now. We've got 29 Mythics, 63 Rares, 140 Uncommons, and 116 Commons. Those first two, the Commons and Uncommons, they're never going to run out. So that's that's the thing. Um, I think we hit a little, maybe, maybe a little less Mythics and Rares than I'd expected. I know that on the Ixalan packs... Didn't quite open up all of the rare lands that I'd hoped for, but with Dominaria with the buddy lands, I managed to hit a fair whack of those, so uh, that's actually pretty good. I shouldn't have to spend too many rare wild cards on lands, but I do have plenty anyway. I should be able to work with that. Um, so, before we open up the packs, I just wanted to have a look at the Guilds of Ravnica stuff. For the record, if you want to look at Guilds of Ravnica, there's the shortcut here. So you can actually type E uh, colon GRN, which is the code for the set, and then it'll show you only the Guilds of Ravnica stuff. So uh, I just wanted to run through the stuff that I haven't got and basically talk about the things that I want to hit. So uh, the cards that I want to hit, mostly I want to play a set of Mission Briefing because I have a plan for hopefully this week's deck that will probably be running a play set of this card. Uh, it's pretty sweet. It's essentially Snapcaster Mage for modern, so it allows you to cast cards from your graveyard. It's pretty sweet. Uh, Drown Secrets is also a card that I like, just on the jank factor alone. It's going to be one of those things that maybe helps you uh, win with a mill deck. It might be the piece that we need. Uh, Quasi Duplicate is a card that's uh, beautifully named. Um, I could probably think of a fair few uses for this card, so hopefully we open a few of those. Maybe open up less of those than we do with the actual useful cards, but you know. Uh, what else have we got in here? That's a top tier card. That's a top tier card. We're not going to talk about the top tier cards, though, because I don't go top tier. Legion Warboss. Now, Goblins is my favourite tribe of all time, and this is essentially Goblin Rabble Master uh, 0.5. So he's not as good, but he does have some good uses. You want to play a set of this in Goblin Tribal, and I think I'm going to try and make Goblin Tribal work. If I if you don't see it, it's probably because it's terrible, um, but there is that. There's also Omnispell Adept as well, who can pay three to cast an instant or sorcery from your hand without paying its mana cost. So Apex of Power, looking at you. 
That's the kind of thing that we want to do. We could also do it with Brass's Bounty, but I don't know why you'd want a Brass's Bounty for three treasures. Or Brass's Bounty in general. But there you go. What else have we got? I did see a deck with uh, Pelt Collector in Modern. I'm not sure how playable it is in Standard, though. Uh, it essentially gets boosted when creatures enter the battlefield that are better than Pelt Collector. Um, and then it has Trample when it's got three or more counters on it. So it becomes a 4-4 Trample if you can make that happen. Um, not sure how useful it is at the moment, but I'll probably have a look at it at some time. Ooh. Experimental Frenzy. I remember looking at this card. What does it do? Four mana, three and a red. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. You can't play cards from your hand. Now, the wording on that, play the top card of your library, it's not cast. Uh, so that actually gets around something interesting, which we're going to stare at right now. Thousand Year Storm, my absolute top tier pick for this set. I want to open up about three copies, because I don't think you want four in any deck that runs it. Uh, six mana, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it for each other instant or sorcery spell you've cast before it this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. So the longer you storm off, the more... Uh, spells you get so if you could uh, look at the top card of your library then thousand year storm if you could cast them that would be interesting but unfortunately you can't there is um the blue one from dominaria though in the precognition field i want to say uh that i think allows you to cast um cast instants and sorceries on the top of your deck but it will allow you to play lands and things like that so it will eventually road block you and things like that uh, Thief of Sanity. Now, this is a cool little theme that I actually want to build a, an entire deck around. Whether it's good or not is uh, pretty easy to figure out. It's not. Uh, <laughs> three mana, two, two with flying. And then when it deals combat damage to a player, you get to look at three cards from their library, exile one of them, and then you can cast that card as though it were any mana. So it's essentially Gonti with a combat damage trigger instead. So it's repeatable. And you can essentially win with your opponent's deck. It's kind of funny. Um, and it's also a mill card at the same time as well. I want to build a deck around this and do some fun stuff. Uh, maybe we'll win with our opponent's stuff. It might be a mana burn episode. We'll see. niv it, my second favorite card. Uh, six mana, five, five. Whenever you draw a card, it deals one damage to any target. So it is a win condition. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, which is going to be mostly how they remove niv -Miz it, you draw a card. So you're guaranteed, for the most part, one card draw and one damage off of this card. So it's it's got a reasonably high floor. It's not like the biggest floor in the world, but, you know, the ceiling on it is pretty sweet. It's uncounterable as well, so... It's going to be pretty fun in an interesting looking deck. I do like Unmod Ego as well. Kind of goes with the Thief, uh, Thief of Sanity plan. Kind of go with this uh, situation of naming cards, exiling them, milling them with sort of a uh, control style to it. I'm very excited to do stuff like that. There's also uh, Mnemonic Betrayal as well. I'm going to make this card work. I'm telling you now, I'm going to combo with it. When I will do that, is a mystery, but I'm going to make it work. So you exile all cards from your opponent's graveyards, and then you get to cast all of them if you want, uh, but you have to pay for it, of course. And then any cards that you don't cast uh, remain exiled. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Win with your opponent's deck is a strategy that I want to try out. It's probably going to be awful, but there you go. I also want four copies of Assassin's Trophy, because anyone who doesn't want four copies of Assassin's Trophy doesn't like winning. Uh, two mana, remove anything. This is going to be an interesting card. Um, I've, I'm not really sure what the meta is right now, but I've heard that, like, is it is a thing. So I'm surprised that people haven't just immediately gravitated towards Golgari or at least splashing for Assassin's Trophy in their decks, because it just kills everything. It kills Teferi. Uh, before he gets to untap lands for his counter spell, things like that. It is a super card, and I think it's going to be played in all formats, really. It's going to be interesting. And I got my Golgari Queen for being in the uh, non-beta. So, um, I'm sure many of you are way ahead of me at this point, but uh, if you are in the uh, closed beta, you can actually redeem a uh, code that you got in an email, and you get the promo versions of 
uh, at your planeswalkers. So I kind of prefer this version of Braska, to be honest. But I won't be able to craft these eventually, so I'm going to have to put some wild cards into it. But Under Elm Lich is also a solid one. Izoni, I'm very interested in playing her. Uh, what else have we got? Hmm. I think that's mostly everything. Uh, March of the Multitudes, this is going to be a win condition. I'm going to try and make maybe a control deck that splashes one green so that we can win with this. It's essentially, um, oh, what's that card from Khans? Uh, but, uh, it used to make soldier tokens, but this one makes soldier tokens with lifelink for a little bit more mana. And then, of course, I do want all of my shock lands as well. Uh, we're probably going to be able to open all of these. I'm going to get a full play set of every single one of these because every single deck w is going to want to run four copies of these if it is a two-color deck or more. So, without further ado, I've rambled on long enough. Let's get into the pack opening, shall we? 100 packs, let's go! Hopefully all of that uh, rare talk will actually uh, cut down on some of the pack opening shenanigans. Light of the Legion, 6 mana, Flying Mentor, 5-5, five, five. when it dies, put a counter on each white creature you control. March of the Multitudes uh, could use this, but you're going to have to... You're not going to be able to trigger it on your own terms in green and white, so I'm not sure if this is going to see any play whatsoever. I probably won't run it. I think it's a little bit too... The floor on it's too low, I think. The ceiling's great, but the floor on it is too low and too conditional. All right. Moving on. All the guild mages, they're all terrible. I think there's maybe one guild mage that's cool. Murmuring Mystic. Now, this is a build-around card. This is um, essentially like a four-mana pyromancer, but in blue. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may create a 1-1 blue bird illusion creature token with flying. So, yeah, you put this in a instance and sorceries matter kind of deck if you want to splash white for that one card that turns all tokens into four four angels then you're entering jank territory and i'm very interested in what you've got to offer gruesome menagerie oh yeah this is a reanimator for mana cost one two and three i'm not sure how good this is um i'd have to look at the full card pool but i don't know if there are many one drops that you'd want to reanimate that are like bombs because this has to be a bomb to run it. For 5 mana to get a 1, 2, and 3 converted mana cost, that's a heavy um, building restriction that you've got to set up there. So, I'm not sure. Ah, uh, they printed more fogs. Good old fogs. I've heard that turbo fog is still a thing, so that's fun. I don't mind turbo fog, honestly. Because yeah, most people, I think, that really hate turbo fog just don't know when to scoop to it. I think that's the main problem with turbo fog like if they're chaining their nexus of fates together you've lost and you should just scoop but some people don't like to scoop and they like to make them run through it and then complain that they had to watch it all it's on you it's on you unfortunately all right anyway that's just my opinion anyway uh let's see this guild mage creatures you control getting trample that's interesting and then six mana to create a two two green and white elf with Vigilance. Six mana is just... I'm sure these are fine in Limited, but... Yeah, just it's not going to see any constructed play. And Watery Grave. Nice. They speak for themselves. There's also a cycle, cycle of Lockets. I don't think these are particularly good. They're probably reasonable in Limited for mana fixing, especially since you can pay four to draw a card with... Uh, draw two cards with them. Uh, in the future. I suppose it's card draw in off blue colours as well, so maybe Singleton could actually use these. So that's going to be interesting. Alright. Let us see. Oh yeah, this thing. I don't know, this is going to be like a limited bomb if you're playing Demir. Flying Death Touch and Hexproof. It's very hard to deal with. It can block everything and it will kill everything, for the most part anyway, as long as they haven't got First Strike. I think this is a pretty sweet limit bomb. I don't think you ever play in Constructed, though, because it's just... Yeah, I don't know if delaying anything is really going to be that useful to you. A rare is actually a Mythic Wildcard. Very nice. That is, uh, is whatever I want it to be. Alright. Show me what you got. 
Sacrifice a creature with Defender. Draw a card. I haven't seen this before. Is this is this maybe the Defender that allows um, our Defender Tribal to go off? It's like um, the reason why you can't really run that deck is because you need to hold all of your Defenders in hand in order to go off when you get your um, whatever her name is. The 4-mana Wall Lord. Yeah. Uh, but sacrificing a creature with Defender to draw a card maybe allows you to refill your hand in order to go off. That's going to be interesting. And it's the battlefield. You may tap any number of untapped gates you control. Draw a card for each gate tapped this way. Whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So this is... It's a really good card for a Gate Matters deck. Unfortunately, Gate Matters decks don't have a win condition right now. Um... I'm hoping that we get Maze's End in one of the future sets. That's like, it's one of the cards that I never got a chance to really build a deck around, but I would absolutely do it in a heartbeat. I'm not sure if Maze's End would actually um, get a reprint because we have that four mana uh, ramp card that allows you to pull two gates out of your deck. So it would make it really easy to win with that and require most decks to run Field of Ruins. So I'm a little skeptical uh, of Maze's End actually being printed, but we need a good uh, gate win condition, and maybe if they make something like Maze's End, but better. Oops, that's me, unfortunately. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, if they make a good win condition for gates, I'll definitely be building a deck around it. Anyway. Yay! Better art, Vraska. Nice. Uh, she's okay, I guess. Four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker. I'm not, like, blown away by her because her plus two is a little conditional. You may sacrifice another permanent, so you have to lose something if you do gain a life, draw a card. So you're not really gaining anything. A lot of the templates for planeswalkers are tick up, draw a card. This one, it's tick up, lose something, get it back, but it might not be better. So it's, eh. the minus three though is pretty solid, but yet, yet again, like minus three is typically kill something with a condition. This is exactly the same. Uh, however, this one is non-land permanent, so it hits pretty much anything, but with mana cost three or less. So it's abrupt decay. Abrupt decay in standard, I'm not sure is all that powerful, especially with Assassin's Trophy uh, being Essentially an auto-include in any Vraska deck. I don't think the, mi the minus three is all that good. The minus nine is solid, but it's a essentially a deck-building restriction. I guess what you'd want to do with Vraska is have her in a Izoni kind of deck, where you're generating a lot of tokens, so that you actually, the plus two, uh, the cost of it is very negligible. You know, you get rid of a 1-1 one -one Sapling or something like that, gain one life and draw a card. I think that'd be fine. And then, of course, the, the minus nine. Whenever you a creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. You know, that swarm go wide strategy suddenly matters with the minus nine. So I think she's a, a little bit underpowered. But I think if you build around her, like I said, in a token strategy, I think she can be fairly useful. So she goes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So she's got a lot to go before she ults as well. But she can draw cards, which essentially would protect herself if you get the right draws. I'm not sure about her, but there you go. Alright. See if we can pick up the pace. More walls. All the walls. I'm going to try and make wall strategy uh, work again, but I, I'm very skeptical of it actually being useful. What's Darkblade Agent? As long as you've surveilled this turn, it's got Death Touch, and whatever this creature deals, comment, no one should play, you draw a card. Um, It's okay and limited, right? 2-3 three for 3 is fine, not great, and then it's basically got kill anything written on it if you surveil, which Devmia does almost entirely. Hey, mission briefing. So, surveil 2, cast a card from your graveyard. It's essentially like Snapcast a Mage or Torrential Gear Hulk, only underpowered in that sense. I'm going to be running 4 copies of this in a brand new deck we'll get to later down the line. Faster! Must go faster. Uh, bad um, Eternal Witness. Return a target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Eternal Witness would allow you to grab any card from your graveyard for three mana um, as a 2-1? Two, 
Yeah, I think so. This is a 3 4, so it's got a better body, but it allows you to grab less. Um, I don't know. It might see a little bit like a little bit of play. It can get back your Vraska if that's something you want to be uh, doing, but you know. Assure and Assemble. Assure is two hybrid mana. We're going to call it Selesnia hybrid mana. Uh, put a 1 1 counter on target creature. That creature gains indestructible until the end of the turn. Meh. Uh, six mana on Assemble. Four and two, a green and white. Create three 2 2 green elf uh, knights with vigilance. So six power for six mana. I suppose it's fine. I think you'd probably play this in limited, but I'm not even sure it'd be your first pick. I don't know. That The Assemble is the one that you want to play this card for. And the Assure is just, like, upside combat trick, I guess. It's, it's okay in limited. It's not going to see any constructive play whatsoever, though. All right, let's move on. Jesus Christ, I'm just going to switch this phone off. All right. Um, enhanced Surveillance. Two mana enchantment. You may look at an additional two cards each time you surveil. Exile this and shuffle your graveyard into your library. So this is the... One of few cards that we have left to shuffle graveyards now. So that is a thing to be aware of. If you do need to prevent yourself from milling and dying, this is going to be the card to do it. I don't know if the additional uh, surveil is really worth putting this into your deck. Because it's essentially taking four cards out of your deck as a potential dead card to make the other cards that are already pretty good a little bit better. I'm not entirely sure you want to do that, but... Like, Surveil is like Scry, but better, because uh, what's better than putting a card to the bottom of your library? It's putting it in your graveyard so that you can interact with it. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure this is going to see too much play. I might play it in a fringe deck, but I'm not sure. Our rare is Venerated Loxodon. Ah, the Convoke strategy. You could tell R&D was very afraid of Convoke because they haven't really made a good Convoke card. Uh, this is about as good as Convoke gets. Uh, for Selesnia. Um They're afraid of it. I, you can tell. Because some of these cards are just not that great. I think March of the Multitudes is the only convert card that's going to see any kind of constructive play uh, outside of just casual or kitchen table. Uh, Disdainful Stroke. Uh, sideboard tech, potentially. Uh, it's a nice little reprint, though. Um, uh, it's not really going to cut the cost of Disdainful Stroke, because I don't think it was that expensive to begin with, but there you go. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Direct current, two damage to any target, so a really bad shock. Not going to see much play. Firemines Research, uh, blue and a red. Enchantment, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you put a charge counter on this. You can remove two charge counters to draw a card, so essentially every time you cast two spells, you draw a card for two mana. You can remove five to deal five damage to any target. You can make a casual deck, I think, built around this card. I'm not entirely sure that this is going to be that useful um i think all of the cards that add counters to uh permanents have rotated i think most of them were in kaladesh so you can't really exploit the charge counter side of this you know in order to not need to uh play so many spells but essentially you play two cards you get one back you play two cards you get one back i think that's how you want to play this uh, if your hand's just full of action, then eventually you get to five charge counters and you can five damage anyone. You're not going to be building this as a win condition and it's not going to be tier one, tier two, or maybe even tier three. I think it's just super casual. All right. Hmm. Uh, some pump for gates. Doesn't give evasion, so it's not that good. And this one, I really... Ah... Uh, Joda decks are going to love this one, but it's essentially filtering mana. Uh, it's not really going to add you much mana in the grand scheme of things. It can add colorless, of course, but if you're running this in a deck, it's going to be in a five-color deck, so that colorless is going to be pretty bad. But yeah, you could pay one to change the color of a, of your mana, and then if it's on a multicolored creature, which is a interesting um, interesting restriction, then you get to put a counter on it. It's not that great. Not going to see much play outside of a Joda deck, which is kitchen table at best. Uh, Legacy playable. Night of Autumn. Now then, this is like the better Reclamation Sage if you're playing Selesnia. Uh, other than that, 
I think it's just a reasonably bodied card, you know. You get a uh, three mana, four three. You gain four life and have a two one, or you destroy an artifact or enchantment. It's going to see a lot of sideboard play in Selesnia decks. I'm pretty sure they're going to run two or three copies of this in the sideboard. If you are playing best of three, expect this card. Other than that, nah. All right, faster. Ah. Yes, the invert. This uh, this card was actually errated, which um, basically means that they changed the text on the card before they printed it. So invert used to say switch the power and toughness of two target creatures. It forgot to put until end of turn, uh, which is very powerful. Um, but it's not going to see any play, I don't think. Invent, six mana. Search your library for an instant card or sorcery. Reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your library. Could see Singleton play. Uh, it's not going to see any limited, and I don't think there's an instant or sorcery worth pulling for six mana um, in standard right now. So, yeah. Our rare is Camaraderie. So, six mana, gain X life, draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures you control. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. Fun card. Um, maybe one of in a token strategy. I think they're probably pushing it at that point if you want to go any further. Like, the floor of this card is gain zero life, draw zero cards. That's the floor. The ceiling is draw 50 cards, mill yourself to death. So, it's, it's an interesting card. I like it, but I don't think it's that good. Alright. Stay away from some of the uh, commons and uncommons this way. Mul March of the Multitudes, very nice. Let's keep going. As I said, you were warned that I would go through uh, these cards a little slowly. Necrotic Wound is an interesting removal spell. One black mana. This is like a, a better fatal push, I would say. Uh, target creature gets plus X, minus X. Oh, minus X, minus X, sorry. Uh, until the end turn where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. So exile is pretty sweet. Um, that's a nice little upside. The minus X minus X means that the ceiling on this card is pretty insane. It's not going to be an early game removal spell, but it is going to be a late game hard removal spell for a lot of the creatures in this format. Um, I do say it's better than Fatal Push. I don't know if that's necessarily true because the Necrotic Wound does obviously need a deck building restriction of a lot of creatures and maybe a little bit of mill, but... I mean, if you're running Stitcher's Supplier in your deck, you're going to be able to use this on turn two to pretty good effect. Like, most turn two players are going to be, like, two toughness, three toughness. So, you know, you probably should be able to hit the undergrowth restriction on this one, and it should hit a lot. I'm not sure um, where I'm going to play this, but I think Golgari decks could play one or two of these maybe they've got assassin's trophy so i don't know it might have just been power creeped out already <laughs> is the thing so we'll see rare wild card for this pack very nice Alrighty then what are you whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only this one oh this is like zada yeah it copies and selects other creatures interesting card not going to see any player because is it isn't really a creature deck Aurelia! Yeah, Aurelia. Uh, 4 mana, 2, 5 with flying and mentor. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control. Until the end of the turn, that creature gets plus 2, plus 0. Oh. Gains trample if it's red. Gains vigilance if it's white. I like this um, if it's red, if it's white thing. Um, I used to have a soldier deck that was kind of the same, and there was one creature that did that. It was like um, plus 2, plus 0 oh, if, if it was red, plus 0, oh, plus 2 if it was white. I can't remember the name of it, but I used to have a kitchen table soldier deck and it used that kind of mechanic. It was a lot of fun. Um, is she going to be that good? I think she's going to be okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe see one or two copies in a Boros aggro deck, but I like she's not got haste, which is one of the big downsides. But then again, like her plus two plus zero oh thing uh, is not something that she needs to attack in to actually get use out of. So she is going to be like a four mana plus 2 plus 0 on the first turn, and then in the future she's going to pump creatures and do all sorts of stuff. It's going to be kind of cool. Uh, let's move on, shall we? 84 packs to go. I really do need to pick the pick up the pace. Uh, Sejuitus Root. I do like this card. 4 mana, 
for two basic land cards or gate cards. So this can grab you two dual lands if you build your deck correctly. Put them onto the battlefield taps and then shuffle your library. So this is one of the best uh, ramp cards in the format at the moment. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, other than that, what do you do? You draw a card each point, discards a card. Whenever you surveil, you bounce this back to your hand. It's reusable discard, essentially, and draw. Eh, it's, it's, it's okay, I guess. You might see some limited play, because it's a reusable card. It's card advantage, in a nutshell. Um, it's probably kind of solid in limited. I don't know if it's going to see any um, constructed play, but there you go. Fireman's Research, okay, let's move on. The further we get into all of these packs as well, the more likely I am to have seen all of the cards and therefore won't be uh, hanging around on the packs, by the way, so it's going to go faster the longer we go. 4 mana for 3-5, this card is interesting, I like it. It's going to be sideboard worthy as an alternative win condition, I would say. Uh, Rata the Silencer cannot be blocked. And when it deals combat damage to a player, you get to exile a creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. That player loses the game if they own three or more exiled cards with hit counters on them. And then it shuffles into their library. So um, you're going to be essentially trying to... If you're going to play this card, it's going to have to be in a sideboard because you basically can't use it as a win condition in like control matchups where they don't have creatures. But you do bring it in against a heavy creature non-token creature matchups. It's very, very specific what uh, decks you're going against that make this card good. Um, I like it. It's it's one of those alternative win conditions. I always love alternative win conditions, but this one's a little too conditional to build a deck entirely around because we can't really donate creatures to our opponent um, and they wouldn't be in their exile either, so... It's just one of those things that you could put in a sideboard against the creature deck and maybe win that way, but I'm not sure. Alright, I was excited at first to see it, but... Thought Erasure, uh, blue and a black to reveal their hand, choose an online card from it, discard that card. Very, very, very solid discard spell. It's essentially Thought Seize without the life loss, and it gets to scry as well um, for an extra blue mana. I think this card is solid, it's going to see a lot of play. Watch out, uh, combo players, your hand is going to get destroyed. Citywide Bust. Destroy all creatures with toughness, four or greater. Um, no, probably not. It's sideboard removal. Um, it's a good board wipe if you're going against a heavy uh big creature deck like dragons or something like that but they're not seeing too much play right now uh the board wipes are a little weak i think in standard right now uh they're very oddly uh conditional except for like cleansing nova from m19 that's about the only uh board wipe that's not conditional there's also one for i think like power three or less or something like that um in black i think it's something like that maybe converted mana cost i'm not sure but it's sideboard tech at best i think is citywide bust uh, yeah, yeah, nothing to look at. Moving on. Demir Spybug. Whenever you surveil, put a counter on Demir Spybug. I like this card. Flying Menace 1-1. One, one. It's pretty reasonably costed for a two-mana flyer already, um, but it has some upside. So if you put this in a surveil deck, this actually could be a reasonable win condition for you since it has evasion. And later down the line, it could be a little bit hard to deal with. Sorry, just had a little burp. Chromatic Lantern. Hey, Joda, you've got some more tech. Also, gate decks as well. If that's ever going to become a thing, Chromatic Lantern's where you want to be on that one. But yeah, it's mostly like five color jank is going to be uh, Chromatic Lantern. It's probably one of the best mana rocks um, in standard at the moment. So if you do need a mana rock, this is probably the one to run. But other than that, not much to look at there. 80 packs, Jesus Christ, we've only done 20. Uh, that's real bad. Alright. Quasi duplicate, create a token of a creature you control, and you can jump start, which means you can discard a land to do it again. I'm not sure what you want to copy with quasi duplicate at the moment, but I'm sure I could figure something out. Uh, it's non legendary stuff, basically. Um, and then you could copy the token as well. 
uh, if they do kill the original. So you could have up to like three copies of a single creature that's not legendary. So I'm not sure off the top of my head what that could be, but there are a few um, creatures like that that could be quite useful. Like even like uh, Legion War Boss, uh, Goblin War, War Boss, the one that generates goblin tokens. Having three copies of that on the board is pretty funny. I don't think you'd want to build a deck like that, but, you know, things like that. Prey Upon's got a... Ooh, some lovely art. I like that. Light up the dark to find your way, and the dark may seek you out. Zelen, the gutter bard. I really like the art on that. Prey Upon, though. Uh, solid removal spell in a green deck, I guess. I'm not sure if he's going to see much limited play, because green is essentially like uh, Selesnia and Golgari, which are low toughness creatures, so... Ooh, I don't know. Then again, I'm looking at a 4-4 here, which could be a reasonable prey upon target. Join shield. So this is the heroic intervention 0.5. Five mana to do what heroic intervention used to do. But untaps all creatures as well, which could be relevant. Um, other than that, I don't know. There's maybe some combo potential if you've got a creature that needs to be untapped. I don't know. I don't think so. Hey, Assassin's Trophy. That's our first one. Destroy any permanent. They get a basic land. In formats that don't use very many basic lands, this is disgusting. In standard, you know, it's a reasonable control, spe uh, control spell. Like, you kill a planeswalker, they get a basic land. That's always a pretty sweet trade-off. You do potentially fix their mana, but, you know, I take it for that. It's... Our card is busted, and it's... Uh, I expected it to warp the format. Maybe it will. There's still time. March of the Multitudes. I say warp the format. It's like dies to... Dice to Doomblade, you know, you can't really um, prevent, uh, stop building decks around Assassin's Trophy, so maybe warp the format is the wrong term for that, but it essentially just kills everything, so nothing can be too powerful. I expected most people to just, like, swing towards Golgari. I think that's what most people are doing pre-release as well, because you get one Assassin's Trophy as part of your pre-release kit. That's from what I've heard, anyway. There's only Thousand Eyes... Uh, four and a two colorless for a two three and it's the battlefield create a one one black and green insect token for each creature card in your graveyard I want to flicker this card that's what I want to do I want to flicker this as many times as I possibly can and go wide that's what I'm going to try to do with this card I'm going to try build a deck around it but other than that not too much to see nope moving on hmm Electrostatic Field, maybe cast an instant or sorcery spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. There was a Arm and Cat card for non-creature spells, that never saw any play. This one's a 0-4, so it can block some aggro. Ah, it could be okay. Maybe a sideboard tech for, like, is it control decks that need something to stop aggro. You know, a 0-4 wall that's going to deal damage to opponents when you count the spells. That's pretty okay. I don't know if you want to play it other than that, though. Bounty of Might, plus three, plus three, to three separate creatures, or uh, one creature gets plus nine, plus nine, or one creature gets plus six, plus six, and one get three, three, plus three, plus three. I don't know. It's, uh, it's reasonable in Limited, I guess. I'd pick it in Limited, but I don't think it's good anywhere else, especially at six mana for a pump spell. Combat trick. No, no, no. All right. Moving on. Uh, nothing to see here. Pelt Collector, seen it before. I really like this set. Have I mentioned that? It's very nice. I think it's going to be great for limited. I don't know. Let me know down below what you guys have been thinking of uh, sealed and limited so far. It looks like a solid thing. Like I don't think you're going to be making three color decks with this uh, format, but you know. Making a dual color deck of your choice. It may, it seems like it's going to be a really good introduction to draft anyway, because you just pick a color combination and run with it, and you shouldn't go too badly with synergy and things like that. What's Leapfrog? That's flying as long as you cast an Insar Sorcery. Uh, draft chaff at best. Overgrown Tomb, very nice. We've barely seen any dual lands. Looks like a lot of my wild cards are going on dual lands, but that's, that's fair enough, you know. Um, meh. Midnight Reaper. 3 mana, 3, 2. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, it deals 1 damage to you and you draw a card. Um, is this okay? Maybe, I don't know. Zombies as well. 
It could see uh, some use in a Zombies deck. I think Zombies has lost too many pieces, though, to be playable anymore, but I think Midnight Reaper is a step in the right direction to bring Zombies back again. Who knows? Because they lost um, one of their Lords from Armin Ket. Actually, they lost two because they lost Liliana's Mastery as well, didn't they? So, yeah, I think Zombies is dead, but Midnight Reaper could be the thing that brings it back. Selective Snare. Return X target creatures of their... Of the creature type of your choice to their owner's hand. Tribal counters, if tribal becomes a thing. Other than that, dead card. Sideboard tech at best, but I wouldn't even run it in a sideboard, I don't think. More walls. I, I'm definitely going to try and make walls a thing, because I think we've got enough now. Uh, you had to run a lot of bad walls uh, to make it a thing. I mean, these walls are still bad, but still, you know. <laughs> They're better than they were. Alright. Uh, can't block and it's activated abilities can't be activated. So it can still attack, so it's bad pacifism. Okay. Swift Blade Vindicator 1-1 one, one, Red White for Double Strike, Vigilance, and Trample. So this is gonna be a top tier mentor uh target. I've also thought about running this in maybe like a Path of Metal deck as well. Path of Metal deals one damage to each creature without Double Strike, Vigilance, or Trample. Uh, so it's going to see some play there. I'm going to try and make Path of Metal work in like a Boros Mentor deck. I think he can do some fun stuff with that. But yeah, this is a great target for any kind of pump spells, counters, anything that you can do to this card. It's going to be solid. Uh, I wouldn't mind a play set of these. Just so I could build that kind of deck. But first, the Jewel Lands, please, game. I want them all. Speaking of, Temple Garden, wonderful art. I like it. Um, it's one of the one of the uh, Shock Lands that actually has art that reflects the name of it. Steam Vents, I'm looking at you. I don't see any steam or vents in your art. Ritual of Soot. There's the removal spell I was on, the board wipe I was on about. Four mana, two and two black for a sorcery speed. Destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less. Um, reasonable, I suppose. Sideboard tech, probably. Uh, but you could probably run this maybe as a one-off in the main board control deck. Um, three or less, I mean, is a reasonable uh, converted mana cost uh, ceiling to hit. Because a lot of cards uh, that are playable are nice and cheap. So maybe it's a board wipe. But it's not going to hit the big creatures that you really want to kill, I don't think. It's going to kill tokens easily so I think if you're up against this Lesnia deck then Ritual Soot definitely wants to be in your sideboard. Yep, yeah, bad wall. We Dragonauts! Yay! Anyone who played Duels of the Planeswalkers should be happy to see this card. I love it. Uh, one, a blue and a red for a 1-3 flyer. Uh, meh on the cost. However, when you cast an instant or sorcery spell it gets plus 2 plus 0 until the end of the turn. I have played this card many a time in my day, and I absolutely love it. Uh, if you can storm off, essentially in like wizards, in fact it is a wizard tribal as well, so it's going to probably see play in that deck. It's not hasty, which is the downside, but I think having like a, a power prowess is pretty sick in the right situation. I didn't even know Deadweight was in this format. Minus two, minus two on an enchantment. This is good in Multani, uh, not Multani decks, Muldrotha decks, uh, because that's an aura that you could bring back. That's another card type as a removal spell. So this is probably going to see a Muldrotha, um, one or two copies maybe in that deck as a removal spell. More Gobos, uh, creatures with Defender can't block this turn. It's not going to be relevant, but it's a two mana, two one, which might have to see playing Goblins because they haven't got the most overpowered um, creatures in the format. Thief of Sanity, we've spoken about this card, I love it. Moving on. Uh, another thing to see here, rare is Pelt Collector, moving on. Crush Contraband, uh, not gonna see any play because we have the Selesnia card, you'd rather splash I think for that. Um, Ritual of Sup, alright, moving on. What else? Ooh, Mulder Hulk. Uh, nine mana, so this gets in the way of, um, the, what's his name? Uh, not, not Zatalpa, not Gisha, the other one in, uh, Momia. So this is going to be a Momia hit. It's actually 
it's not terrible, uh, but obviously you want the uh, the, the, the nine mana win the game card. Uh, but this one actually returns a land from your graveyard to the battlefield, so it's okay. If you're milling a lot of cards, this might come down as a two mana 6-6, six, six, which is okay, but it's not going to see any constructive play, I don't think. It's going to see some Momia play. That's about it, really. Oh, God. Nullhide Ferox. Two and two green for a 6-6 six, six with Hexproof. You can't cast non-creature spells. Now, you could build around that by just not running any. Uh, two mana. Nullhide Ferox loses all abilities until the end of the turn. Any player may activate this ability. If a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard it, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard. I don't think this is going to see any play. Maybe if... Um, What's his name? Three mana, five, five, uh, the Ronas. Maybe if Ronas was still in standard, this would probably would see a little bit of play because it does activate Ronas on four. Uh, but other than that, probably not really. Six, six without any kind of evasion um, with protection that can be removed. Not amazing. Not at all. I'd rather just wait another two mana and play uh, Carnage Tyrant, I think. Might of the Masses. Love this card. Selesnya is going to love it. Any gold white strategy. In fact, Golgari tokens is going to love it. Plus one, plus one. Until the end of the turn for each creature control. It's going to make, essentially, blocking really terrifying for your opponent. Because they're going to have to block everything if they can. Because Might of the Masses can just go around whatever doesn't get blocked and just kill your opponent. If you're playing a lot of 1-1s, then you're essentially redirecting damage with mass, uh, Might of the Masses. Uh, into just straight up combat damage. Boros Challenger, 2 3 for 2, which is pretty sweet with Mentor. Gets plus 1, plus 1 until the end turn. Nice mana sync. Pretty reasonable limited card. Could see some play in a Boros uh, list as well in maybe aggro. I'm not entirely sure. We'll see. Mythic Wildcard, moving on. I haven't seen any of my. Thousand Year Storms yet. Where are those? Give me them. Defending Clarion. One red and a white. Three damage to each creature. So, board wipe. Uh, it's getting re uh, replacing Sweltering Suns in that sense. And then creatures you control gain lifelink until the end of turn, which is, I suppose, nice and reasonable. I'd, I don't know. I don't think the lifelink's going to be that amazing. You could choose both, actually. Um... That is interesting. So you'd need uh, four toughness creatures in order to make use of both, which Boros isn't really doing. Um, but, you know. Hmm. Oh, that's um, that's didgeridoo um, artwork right there. Very old card. The Minotaur trying to steal a didgeridoo. Finally got it. Sweet flavor win. Yeah, I'm not sure about that card. Probably not going to see too much play at all. Um, ba -ba -doo. Izoni. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I like this guy. He's a little cutie. Look at him. Citywide bust. Okay, moving on. See, we're getting through all of the uh, I've seen all these cards selection. Uh, nothing to see here. Although there is a Sky Knight Legionnaire Flying Haste 2-2 two, two for 3. Gonna see play in the uh, Path of Metal deck if I end up building that. Reasonably costed. Nice card. There's a card that used to be in um, in Ravnica before it that was kind of similar. Uh, I think it had Double Strike instead of Haste. Um, but yeah. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Pretty good counter against maybe control though it's removable it demands an answer though um because it essentially makes countering your creature spells uh from that point forward uh not so great so it's gonna eat removal and then you can probably play a creature down after it uh it's a cast trigger as well so yeah you can get around counter spells with a little bit of value essentially turns all of your creatures into a higher um floor kind of power level which i like sideboard tech though Okay, moving on. Rare wild card. Alrighty then. Should be noted as well that I don't think I'm going to be opening up the vault with all of my packs because, of course, I have um, reset my uh, collection. There's not going to be many duplicates that I'm going to hit that are going to actually boost my vault progress, so something to be aware of. Probably not going to see it in these hundreds of packs. But if we're not seeing it, it just means that I'm not getting duplicates, and that's a good thing. Assassin's Trophy, very nice. 
Where's my thousand year storm? Give it to me. Uh, World Soul Colossus. Mana sync at best. Probably reasonable in uh, limited. X green and a white for a 0 0 with Convoke, so you can tap any number of creatures to pay for its mana cost. And it enters the battlefield with X 1 1 counters on it. Doesn't have evasion, so it's not going to get through a 1 1, which is the main problem. It could be a thousand thousand, but as long as your opponent has a 1 1, it ain't going to get anywhere. So it's probably going to see a little bit of limited play. I like the card, but it needs some evasion. It needs like trample or flying. <laughs> if you give it flying, it's going to be nuts, but other than that. Beacon Bolt. One a blue and a red. Deals damage to target creature equal to the number of instants and sorceries you own in exile and in your graveyard. So this is going to go in like a Crackling Drake deck. It's nice removal if you are an instant and sorcery deck matters card. Um, it's essentially Ral's Minus, I think, uh, Beacon Bolt. So, you know, it's okay. Sorcery speed is meh. Blech. Yeah. Hey, it's the Demir Glimmer of Genius. Uh, one blue and a black surveil two, which means you get to look at the top two cards. You get to put them back in any order or put them in your graveyard. Really powerful stuff. Then you get to draw two cards. Deals two damage to you instead of gaining two energy. So it's strictly worse than Glimmer of Genius, but this is kind of our replacement card. There's also a uh, one, uh, a blue mana four drop, I think, that has jump start as well. It's kind of another Glimmer of Genius, except for the jump start pretty much takes away the extra card draw there. But if you're flooding out, then it's not going to really matter that you're dumping lands into your graveyard. Uh, Sion, a Sonic Assault, 3 mana, tap creature, deals 2 damage, not going to see any play. Might be good in limited, don't like it. Ritual of Soot, okay, moving on. Gotta move faster, I always, always lag out on these ones. Uh, Goblin Electromancer, going to see good uh, play in combo decks. I have an idea for this deck, uh, this card. Instant Sorceries cost one less to cast, so you get nice cost reduction. Demands an answer, even if you can't make good use out of it. <laughs> Your opponent's still going to fire their shocks, lightning strikes and stuff at it, which otherwise they would be firing at your face, which is what Control would really appreciate. And we've got that one again. Moving on. Spybug, yep, nothing to see here. Erratic Cyclops, 4 mana for a 0 8 with Trample. Doesn't have Defender, uh, which actually wouldn't matter um, if we were to play Defender decks, because that's a banned list, actually. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus X plus O, where X is the spell's converted mana cost, and it has Trample. Ooh. Maybe? And is it Spells deck? Similar to running Wee Dragonauts, um, could see a little bit. I don't know, 4 mana for a 0 8 is going to block a lot of stuff. I'm not sure. Maybe as a 1 or 2 of at best. Okay, nothing really here. 1 damage to each creature your opponent's control. Hi, uh, hi Chain Whirler. And then they can't block. Alright. March of the Multitudes. Glad to see many more of those. Win condition for a lot of decks. Nothing to see here. Although, the best name card in Magic, Hypothesizzle. Uh, five mana, draw two, then you may discard a non-land. Non if you do, it deals four damage to target creature. Removal and card draw. It has to be a non-land, though, um, if you are to discard, which is less than ideal. It's not that good. But I do love the name. I might just play it for a meme. We'll see. Trostani Discordant. 5 mana, 3 and a green and a white for a 1 4. Uh, this is essentially uh, Angel of Invention. Other creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1. When it enters the battlefield, you create 2 1 1 white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. And then at the beginning of your end step, uh, each player gains control of all creatures they own. So if your opponent's stealing your stuff, you can get it back. It's never really going to see. Uh, any use you really want the first two abilities to matter though so it's going to be a selesnia tokens list that's going to run this one um but other than that yeah solid card i guess i suppose and maybe a two or three of in a selesnia deck all right arc like phoenix four mana for a three two flying haste solid At the beginning of combat on your turn if you cast three or more instants and sorcery spells you may return it to the graveyard to the battlefield similar to the phoenix Every Phoenix has this kind of ability, but with a different condition. This one's a little bit harder to activate because you want to be running this mostly in an aggro deck, I would say. 
four mana three two flying haste. Yeah, I just don't know if you can find the slot for this. I think I'd almost want to run um, Rekindling Phoenix instead, just because it's harder to deal with. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like it. Not sold. Flower and Flourish. Search your library for a basic forest or plains. Put it into your hand. Shuffle your library. Thinning. Um, mana fixing in green and white. Do you need it? I don't know. You probably want to run it, though, if Flourish is relevant. Four and a green and a white. Creature to control. Get plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. Might see some limited play. I don't know if you're going to play it other than that. Uh, four mana, four, four. When it dies, you create two, two, twos. That is a solid, solid limited card. Uh, other than that, not going to see much play. Legion War Boss. God tier. Love it. Alright. Uh, there's the Chemist's Insight. This is the draw spell that I was on about. Uh, two cards to draw for four mana. Instant speed, and you've also got jump start as well, so you can discard your flooded lands in order to replace one and draw an extra one. It's kind of nice. Urban Utopia. End of the battlefield, you draw a card. Oh, it only turns a land into. This isn't ramp. I thought it might be ramp and I was getting excited, but no. We currently have, like, Gift of Paradise to do that job, but it's three mana. Yeah, this is alright, I suppose. Vivid Revival. Five mana. Return up to three target multi multicolored cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile Vivid Revival. Solid singleton card if you're going to do a multicolored uh, deck matters. I have a commander deck that I might want to run this one in. Um, but other than that, yeah. Not too good. Alright, nothing to see here. Thief of Sanity. Yep, moving on. Okran Assassin. 1-1 one, one for 3 with Death Touch. All creatures able to block it, do so. Really good if you are in a swarm strategy because your swarm can go all the way around your opponent. Uh, if you can pump this as well, it's going to see some play. Because um, Death Touch only needs to deal 1 damage to a creature in order to kill it. So any pump is essentially kill X creatures. Um, X untapped creatures, that is. Yeah, I like this card. Uh, it's going to see a little bit of limited play, I would say. Not much standard play, but you never know. If we're playing a swarm deck, I might run one or two of these in just so that I can essentially have all my creatures are unblockable on a card. And Irata, moving on. Uh, nothing to see here, I don't think. What are you? Comment down and shall play myth. Discard all the cards in your hand if you do draw that many cards. It's a bit too expensive. It, the effect is good. The price, not so much. I'd prefer this on a cheaper card, I think. Hmm. I think most people would prefer their cards to be cheaper, but there you go. That's just me. Alright. Uh, nothing too spectacular here. Another Izoni. No! Thousand Year Storms. What is this? What is this madness? I've gotten quite unlucky with my... Uh, Openings, I would say. Citywide bust. I think some of the rares are like weighted to be uh, more common. Because I always get stuff like this. I think with Dominaria, it was Ezra that I had like seven in my 90 packs. Which was ridiculous. This one's throwing Izonis and things like that at me. Uh, Ledev Champion, 3 mana 2-2, two, two. when it attacks you may tap any number of untapped creatures, it essentially has Exalted, but it drops your guard, I hate it. Narc Amoeba, good in modern, solid reprint for that format, don't think it sees much play in standard though, I don't, like the way you want to use Narc Amoeba is with Surveil, you want to Surveil it into your graveyard and then it goes into play, I just don't think that the effect is powerful enough to run um, this in your deck and to be honest you'd be wanting to run four copies of this to make it really work I don't like it. It's not a standard playable card any other format though. It's really good Which is why it's an expensive card uh, Status and statue status gives plus one plus one and death touch until the end of the turn many people are pointing towards goblin chain whirler for this card so if you play goblin chain whirler with the trigger on the stack to deal one damage to each creature you play status which gives Chain Whirler Death Touch, and then when uh, Chain Whirler deals one damage to each creature, with Death Touch, it's essentially a board wipe for four mana, but the cost on it is obviously pretty 
grim. It's three red mana and a green or a black. That is that's quite the cost. So not going to see any play. Really funny if it goes off. Devastating to your opponent if it happens. The other side, statue, two black and a green. Destroy target artifact, creature, or enchantment. Actually really good. I think you probably enjoy that card. Uh, this is probably sideboard tech though. Uh, but the... Ability to hit a lot of different things. I mean, you're running Assassin's Trophy, so yet again, I think this one's power creeped out just because of Assassin's Trophy. But if you need an extra removal spells, I guess this one's okay. If you're running it as a meme for Chain Whirler, then it's going to be good there as well. Our rare is Watery Grave. Nice. Give me those jewel lands. Uh, nothing special here. Temple Garden, very nice. I don't think I've seen any steam vents. I badmouthed them and then they stopped turning up. Thief of Sanity. Yet again, another card that keeps popping up. Wand of Vertebrae. Put the top card of your library into your graveyard. Shuffle up to five cards. Nah. Meh. Oh, this is the replacement for Cast Out. Or Ixalan's Binding, kind of. Uh, it's got Convoke, so it's going to see playing Selesnya decks as a removal spell. I kind of like it. It's okay. Um, but other than that, not too great. Uh, when it ends the battlefield, tag your creature gets plus uh, vigilance, plus X, plus X, where X is the number of creatures in your graveyard. Can't be blocked by more than one creature. Yeah. Interesting. And Cyclops. Moving on. 35 packs to go. My god, this video has probably gone on long enough. There's nothing in that pack. As should be the case for a lot of the stuff around here. Drown Secrets. Not too bad. Yeah, it looks like we're not going to get any of our... Uh, any of our Thousand Year Storms, which is my number one card from this set. Not going to see any of those. I didn't see any uh, mission briefings either. My wild cards are going to be spent by the end of the day. <laughs> it looks like the case anyway. Nothing here. Divine Visitation. So this is the replacement for Anointed Procession. Five mana for an enchantment. If one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, you create four fours instead. Uh, so think of March of the Multitudes creating X four fours. Uh, it's going to be pretty sweet. I like this card a lot. I'm going to try and build around it at some point, I think. It's really fun. I don't think it's that much of a cost to run it in your deck either. But it does nothing on its own, so that's going to be something to be aware of. 3 mana, 2-2 two, two with Death Touch. Solid, solid um, limited card. Not that great otherwise. Hey, Ral, is it Viceroy? I think I prefer the promo version of this card, but, you know. And I'm going to be spending my wild cards on it, so I really don't really want to see uh, any of the Planeswalkers from these packs, which is interesting. Because I'll be getting the promos instead. Which is going to cost me wild cards regardless. Oh my god. This video. Uh, solid Convoke card. Yeah, other than that. Overgrown Tomb. Very nice. Uh, nothing to see here. Temple Garden. Very nice. I want to see all of those chase rares so I don't have to spend my wild cards on them. I don't want to see Errata's any more, please. <laughs> no more errata's. And... Dawn of Hope. I like this card, actually. Dawn of Hope is one and a white for an enchantment. Whenever you gain life, you may pay two. If you do, draw a card. If you can put this in a deck that can gain one life, um, just consistently, one at a time, then you can use this as a pretty solid draw spell. It's also a mana sink as well, so it's not dead if you don't have any life gain uh, ready to go. You can pay a three and a white to make a one-one lifelink creature which enables the top half of the card i really do enjoy this card i don't think it's tier one by any standards but it is good card advantage and solid in limited and uh, nothing to see here ritual of sup too many of you go away such a small set and i haven't seen all of the all of the rares and mythics from it. Lazav, the mul multifarious, multifarious, whatever. Two mana for a 1-3. When it is the battlefield, you surveil one. So you get to put a card into your graveyard if you choose. 
Uh, Lazav can pay X and become a copy of a creature card in your graveyard with um, the mana cost X. Um, it keeps its name and its legendary in addition to its other types. So, um, yeah, it's going to see some fun little play. I like it. Um, other than that, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to see too much of this card. I like it. I'm probably going to play it. We'll see what happens. It's really good uh, in, like, Brawl, which, uh, Wizards, if you're listening, get on with that. Give give me Brawl. I won't Brawl. Singleton's good and all, but I want a Commander. Thief of Sanity. Moving on. Sprouting Renewal. Convoke for three mana. Create a 2-2. Two -two. Destroy an artifact or enchantment sideboard tech in limited, I guess. Other than that, eh, it's, it's alright. Mausoleum Secrets. Oh, yes, I like this card. One and a black, instant speed, with undergrowth, so it's uh, a graveyard deck matters. Search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your library. It's essentially a demonic tutor, diabolic tutor, Whatever kind of tutor you want, as long as you got the undergrowth to match it. So, I do really like this card. If you're running a black combo deck, it's gonna be quite cool. Like, if I'm running um, Mnemonic, whatever it was, the three mana one, then this is a good way to trigger it. I don't know if I'd run creatures in that deck, though, so, you know. It's gonna require some serious build around, but it is a really powerful card if you can build the deck for it. All right. Uh, nothing to see here. Rare wild card. Moving on. Although, what's this one? Two mana, sacrifice a creature. Gain life equal to its toughness. Destroy a creature and opponent controls. Ooh. The reanimator strategy that I had in mind might want this. Hmm. I don't know, actually. We've got Chupacabra to kind of take its position, but it has an additional cost of sacrificing on two. <sighs> maybe. Maybe. You'd have to really think about it. We've got a 2-1. Uh, ornery Goblin. Nobody ever listens to my complaints. Not even when I use the listening stick. I do love the listening stick. Um, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I want more good goblins, though. I'm not getting any. Uh, six mana can't be counted. Six damage to any target. If you're running a burn deck, best of three might want this in the sideboard against control. Other than that, not sure. I think um, burn's got a good matchup against control to begin with. So, Ionize. Love this card. One, a blue, and a red. Instant speed. Counter target spell. Then it deals two damage to that spell's controller. So this is going to be a counter burn strategy, which is one of my favorite strategies out of the Jewels of the Planeswalker games. I do really love that deck. Uh, Ionize, solid counter spell, though, because you're going to be running it in a Niv-Mizzet stuff. We're going to be getting incremental damage. A counter and deal two is going to be terrifying for your opponent if they're on two life. They won't be able to play a card, otherwise they die. It's just going to be solid. There is a sinister... Um, Sinister something, there's a three mana uh, counter spell as well. You'd be running these together, I think, but you're really good in an is it counter spell strategy. I've, I've heard that is it is a thing right now. I haven't really played much standard since I've gotten back, so it's no surprises that I don't really know what the matter is. Discovery and dispersal. Discovery is surveil and draw a card. Reasonable, I guess. Sorcery speed's a little bit eh. It'd see more play, I think, if it was instant speed. So, dispersal. Three, a blue, and a black. Each opponent returns a non-land permanent. They control with the highest converted mana cost to their hand and then discards a card. Uh, it's removal if they've got no cards in hand. I don't know. It's, it's neither here nor there, I don't think. I'm not sure about that one. We've got camaraderie. My god. Give me my thousand year storm. Legion War Boss. I'll take it. I haven't seen any of them. They are mythic, so they are hard to come by, but, you know. Bounty Agent. Human Soldier. 2-2 two, two for 2. Destroy a legendary permanent as an artifact creature enchantment. Kills Planeswalkers. Sideboard tech. Oh, no. Sorry. It doesn't kill Planeswalkers. It literally says artifact creature enchantment. Yeah. Not going to see any play, I don't think. It's meh. If it said Planeswalker, it'd see sideboard tech, I think. 
but other than that, not so much. Yay! <laughs> oh, my favorite card. My absolute favorite card, my baby. I'm gonna be building, building with you. It's probably gonna be the first thing I do. Make that work. I do really love a tough deck building restriction. Assassin's Trophy, not too bad. At least I got a play set of those, right? That's pretty good. Overgrown Tomb. Looks like I got a play set of all the dual lands as well, so mana I'm not going to be hurting for. Though I do still need to go in and get my uh, dual lands and things like that from... What's the Majigger? Um, Dominaria. Beast Whisperer. Meh. We Dragonauts coming back again. Another Ral. Alright. I haven't seen uh, Niv Mizzet either. We finally hit five copies of Izoni. Wonderful. This is a pretty small set to be fair though, so. And our first steam vents. Yes, show me where the vent is. And show me where the steam is. And then I'll think that this is good art. It's good art, but it's not a steam vent. Not a steam vent. Alright. Hmm. Nothing good here. Nothing good there. Seven more packs to go. We're almost at the end now, and then we get to see how many wild cards I've got. March of the Multitudes. I think that's my fourth copy now. Uh, I don't know if you want four copies of it in a deck. You probably want three at best. I do like the route or root. It's very good. Assure and assemble. Don't really want any more of those. Please stop handing me them. And Dawn of Hope. Happy to see more of those. Four more to go. Almost to the end now. It's been a very long video. Erratic Cyclops. Street Riot. As long as it's your turn, creatures you control have plus one, plus zero, oh, and Trample. Well, Trample doesn't matter on your opponent's turn. Singleton play, maybe. Limited play, maybe. I don't know. Other than that, oh my god. Leave the citywide bus alone. Alright, Thought Erasure. Solid. Mythic wildcard. Alright, and we're going to get a Mythic with our last skills of Ravnik pack. Come on, Thousand Year Storm. Show me the money. Charnel Drill. Three mana, four, four with Trample. Good stats. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, put a 1 1 counter on it. Otherwise, sacrifice it. There's where the good stats drop off. Ah, discard a creature card, put a 1 1 counter on it. Okay, so it needs a lot of work. It's reasonably easily dealt with by a lot of spells. I mean, like counter burns uh, thing right now and they've got most of their removals in burns so it's going to be a problem for them but they'll just counter on the way down I think and honestly if they interact with your graveyard anyway you're going to have problems with this it's not going to see much play this troll uh, you're probably going to have to like suicide creatures into your opponent in order to just keep it alive I don't know well that's going to do it for this 100 card 100 pack pack opening we actually have 37 mythics 80 rares 178 uncommons and 150 commons. Now, how did I do on my uh, lands? So, as I mentioned, you could do E colon GRN to unlock the um, looking at only one set situation. Let's go to lands, rares. Let's see what we got. One steam vents, three overgrown tombs, three temple gardens, three water graves. Eh, it's not too bad. I don't have to expend too many uh wild cards on that one but as you can see like my dominaria um duels and my ixlon duels are a little lacking at the moment so i'm gonna have to expend some of my 80 rares into that but it's not going to be too much of a problem especially considering like these are something that you should focus on really early on uh, when you build your collection you really want to um work on getting your dual lands to make sure that your mana is good because your mana is like the basic bread and butter of your deck so you know that's going to do it for today's episode, guys. Anyway, I'm going to be losing my voice by the end of the day, it seems. You can already hear it's crackling a bit, so 
I hope you've enjoyed this deck, uh, this pack opening video. It's gone on a little bit long, but hopefully it's been informative and enjoyable all the same. If you did enjoy it and you want to see more pack openings in the future, more things like this, then be sure to like, subscribe, hit that little bell icon, leave any feedback, any comments down below as well. I'd love to hear from you guys because I have been gone a week and I haven't heard too much from you guys. I haven't been able to chat to you. Because I've been in a foreign country with poor internet. So really love to hear what you guys have to say about this new set. What decks you're building. Things like that. How should I spend my wild cards? Leave all that down in the comments below. And I would very much look forward to chatting with you guys. Alright guys. See you next time. Bye bye.